President Biden is set to speak later at the White House asking for cities, get this, to use that COVID funding that they got now to pivot and fight crime with that money. Chief White House correspondent James Rosen joining us live again from the, uh, the North Lawn there, the White House. James, I know earlier you told us one of the most jam-packed days you've seen for President Biden's schedule, if I'm correct on that. Uh, what more can you tell us about this day uh, for the president? Sean, good morning once again. About 45 minutes from now, the president will welcome here to the White House and just getting in and out of the complex, we can see the heightened security for this visit uh, from King Abdullah II of Jordan, a major U.S. ally in the Middle East, and his wife, the, the crown princess. Um, and that's just, you know, for a, for a normal day, that would be a pretty big event uh, on the White House schedule. It's interesting that it's been listed as closed press. I find it inconceivable that they won't allow a pool spray of a meeting of uh, two such important world leaders, but we will see. And then just in the afternoon, uh, after Jen Psaki's final briefing, uh, we see that the president has back to back to back uh, within uh, a, about an hour or 90 minutes time. Uh, let's just see, at 2.30, uh, he's going to meet with those local chiefs of police. We discussed that in the last hour, elected officials and others, about community policing and other modes of intervention without ever really saying, let's put more cops on the beat. Uh, that would be too dissonant with the Democratic message for the midterms. Then at 3, he speaks to that group. And then at 3.30, the president uh, welcomes again to the White House the members of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Uh, this is a 10-member organization for the South Southeast Asian region that includes uh, Thailand and the Philippines and um, Singapore and all sorts of important countries, uh, critically important to the United States in our long-running struggle with China uh, for global hegemony. So uh, this is quite an action-packed schedule for the President of the United States, uh, any president of any age or disposition. Yeah, a great point. Excellent point there as well as not only a uh, busy day for the president, but also White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. At least we can call her that uh, until the end of the day today as she is the outgoing press secretary. Uh, Karine Jean-Pierre set to take over. Um, James, I'm just curious. You have a different vantage point than the viewer does. You actually get to be in the briefing room. Um, what do you predict this day may be like? Um, and then reflecting back, do you feel that you, you were fairly called upon? We, I'm sure you've had many questions for this White House. Um, do you expect that maybe you may get more questions in with a new White House press secretary? Just your overall thoughts from your vantage point there. Well, my vantage point, Sean, is different, not just because I'm a reporter who interacts with the White House press team on a day-to-day -day basis, which, of course, distinguishes reporters from the viewers, uh, but I'm also someone who goes back about 15 years with Jen Psaki and has had uh, quite a, a long relationship with her that has at times included uh, some contentious moments in other briefing rooms, like the State Department briefing room. Uh, and uh, questions of censorship have arisen and resulted in official investigations. All this is a matter of public record. So we go way back. Uh, you ask if I'm disappointed in my treatment in the briefing room. Uh, I don't want to stand here on the North Lawn of the White House, a privilege that that is, and whine about my treatment in the briefing room. However, I will say I was surprised and disappointed by Jen's reluctance to call on me. I think uh, it really became manifest after the uh, January 19 news conference with the president, in which he veered off the list of pre-approved questioners uh, and called on yours truly, and I asked him a question. Uh, about Politico polling that was uh, publicized quite heavily in Politico that very morning about his mental state. And I think after that, uh, if I hadn't already been enshrined on it, I became officially a member, maybe the only member, I'm not in a position to say, of this White House enemies list. Sean. Well, we will continue to watch. I remember that moment uh, very clearly. Uh, a, a, a brand new person coming, or at least the deputy now stepping up. Um, how will these questions be handled with different news outlets? Perhaps maybe this would be a new leaf. We'd love to stay positive about it. Chief uh, White I House Correspondent. Yes, sir. Your audio that well at this point, Sean, is breaking up, but I do believe you've asked about Karine Jean Pierre, the incoming White House press secretary, and what that may herald for the briefing room. Uh, I think a lot of us, particularly those of us who uh, are located in the back rows of the briefing room, where Jen Psaki seldom ventured to tread, uh, are expecting uh, more of the same yeah. and perhaps are uh, given at this moment to quoting uh, that genius musician and lyricist, Pete Townsend of The Who, who said, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. All right, we'll continue to follow that. James Rosen joining us live at North Lawn. James, thank you.
Turning now to the baby formula crisis we're seeing across the country as American families deal with the shortage of baby formula. Our next guest released photos showing shelves and pallets packed with baby formula at the Ursula Migrant Processing Center at our nation's southern border. Joining us now to discuss is Republican Congresswoman from Florida, Kat Kamek. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on. Could you, for our viewers, maybe add some context to the photos that you shared? It looks much different than the empty formula shelves we've seen in some parts of the country. Yeah, absolutely. It's so good to be with you guys. And those photos that you're seeing right now, the viewers that, that are seeing those stock shelves, those are sent to me by Border Patrol agents at the border. They not only have been keeping and stockpiling baby formula for months in anticipation for this surge, but they have a tractor trailer full at the McAllen facilities. This is outrageous. In my own district in Ocala, Florida, you go to the Walmart, the shelves are barren. And this is just another indicator of how this administration, the Biden administration, administration is putting Americans last. And let's be clear, this isn't an either or, you know, no one's saying that we shouldn't be taking care of the babies at the border, but, but let's be real, Biden invited them here. They are victims of the trafficker in chief's America last policy. And as a result, you have moms and dads panicking, and we have children, American children around the country that they're they're getting sick because they're using formula that isn't they're not used to. You can't get the formula that they need for for some specialty formulas. This is insane, and it all points back to the Biden administration, the FDA, which has failed miserably in shutting down our nation's largest supplier of baby formula. And if you if you look at the press release from Abbott. This is what's most insane. The FDA won't even return their phone calls or their emails to get their facility back online, despite the fact that the FDA and the CDC confirmed this week that the deaths, the tragic, tragic deaths of those infants, there was no connection to the formula that was produced mm. in those facilities. Mm. So 43 percent of our baby formula across the country is missing. The Biden administration has no plan to backfill it. And now once again, Americans come dead last. We've spoken to moms on this program who are struggling to find formula for their young babies. And it's an issue that is so timely, right? You, you don't really have other options, especially if, if your child has a sensitive stomach and there are limited uh, formulas that work. And as a parent, that's the one thing you want to make sure you're able to true provide for your child. The White House did say it will work with manufacturers to speed up production. They also want to crack down on price gouging as well and also bring in some additional imports when it comes to formula. They also said in a press release yesterday that they've been working on this over the past few months. They've been keeping an eye on that. Do you buy that? I don't buy that for one second, because if they were working on it, they could start by returning the phone calls from Abbott's top brass. They could start by returning emails. They could start by easing the regulatory environment that's constricted them in the first place. They could start by getting rid of the tariffs that are prohibiting the importation from the facility in Ireland. What they are not doing is they are just, I mean, this just blows my mind. I still, I, I, I speak as the youngest Republican woman in Congress who is of the same age group that so many of these young mothers are. My friends that I grew up with, they're young mothers. They are panicking and they're saying, what the heck is going on? The administration hasn't been working on this for months because they would have come up with a plan by now to backfill that nearly 50 percent of the market share that the baby formula in Michigan is producing. But they haven't. This is another disaster, a total dumpster fire, if you will, of the Biden administration policy. Yeah, we heard we heard uh, Press Secretary Jen Psaki warning against parents from hoarding. She said, don't do that. <laughs> Parents are trying to find formula to get a hold of. Congresswoman Kat Kamek joining us this morning. Thank you, Congresswoman. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.